Today, we're diving into a really exciting topic, five services that can bring in serious cash flow for those of you just starting out in the digital agency game. That means you can offer your clients a variety of products and create a steady stream of income that keeps on growing. But here's the twist. I'm not going to just rattle off these services and call it a day. We're gonna make things a bit spicy. So I'll not only share the services and why they're good for you to have in your agency portfolio, I'll dish out one to two top tips on how to sell each of them. These gems come straight from real life experience and also the experience from working with a team that collaborates with over 60,000 marketing agencies. So you're getting some real insider knowledge here. By the time we're done, you'll know why these services are worth offering, how to pitch them like a pro, and pricing and packaging strategies that will have your clients signing up. And as a bonus, I'll also give you some ideas on how to find opportunities to target local businesses with these services and some smart AI prompts you can use in your prospecting process. So stick around till the end of this video and let's get you on the path to some serious profitability. Okay, let's start off with what I think is the easiest one to get your foot in the door, and that is reputation management. For many local businesses, online reviews are, of course, the first thing clients see. And they're always looking at those Google Business Profile, Yelp, TripAdvisor ratings, etc., and the underlying contents of those reviews. In fact, 98% of people are using online reviews to inform purchasing decisions. And business owners get that. Many of them want to have higher ratings and better reviews than their competitors. So, how do we pitch it? When pitching reputation management, the approach we see agencies who are really effective in this space take is to position the services as both a growth driver and a time saver. So when you're speaking to a prospect, you want to explain that number one, Google prioritizes businesses with better ratings for local search. As a business owner, you likely don't have time to analyze and respond to all the feedback you're getting across your different listings. So let me, as the agency, help you out with that. And of course, good reviews, recent reviews, and high ratings bring in customers. Now, just a few quick tips on finding and selling reputation management to prospects. So where you can, you want to think about seasonality. For example, we're about to head into the warmer months, so spring and summer. So lawn care businesses, sports leagues and coaches, tourism, etc., targeting these as they head into peak season will likely make them much more receptive to your pitch because these warmer months are when they make most of their money and they themselves want a full pipeline of work and vice versa, of course, for businesses that benefit in colder months. So the other thing is you want to be trying to find businesses in your local area with the biggest room for improvement in their ratings. So let's use the lawn care example and let's do an actual search of lawn care companies. So you can see all these providers with high ratings and lots of reviews in Boca Raton, just using that as an example. And here you have an active 3.5 star rated business with a small number of reviews, none of which are recent. So when you're prospecting to these businesses, show them how they compare versus competitors and get them to think like their own leads. What would a prospect gravitate towards? High stars with a lot of reviews visible at the top of search or low stars with a few reviews not ranking well? I know what I'd do. So pricing for reputation management is really straightforward, but the complexity is around how your agency is set up to deliver this service. Now, some clients will be happy to give you all their logins and respond to reviews for them, and you can charge them a couple of hundred dollars per month for that. Now, that's great, but it means work on your end because you not only have to be on top of monitoring reviews, responding to them, you have to figure out how to get more reviews for those local businesses and, of course, do the reporting. We want to try and keep this easy because you want to be scaling in the future. So as an alternative, there are review management and marketing tools out there that you can resell. These let clients easily and instantly respond to reviews using AI across their listings, and they can use those tools to ask customers for more reviews by email or text. The advantage of this approach is that you are leaving the work to them, but you are making their lives easier nonetheless, and you're pocketing monthly revenue on the resale and the service. And these can net you hundreds of dollars for every local business in monthly recurring revenue, and it can snowball very quickly as you scale your reputation management reselling. 
Okay, next up is social media management, one of the most popular services we see new agencies offer. I've personally done this, and so I'll share a bit about my experience. Now, initially, I was skeptical. Why would a local business want to pay an agency or anyone money to post just a bit of text or image or video on social media? But the reality is surprising. You'll often find when you approach restaurants, for example, most owners' reaction is, if they're not doing social media already, they're very receptive to hearing you out because they don't have time to do social media. And time, that's the crux of why social media management is so valuable. And also, lots of business owners don't have confidence in their own content creation skills. So it's a really big opportunity for agencies. So when it comes to pitching for social media and some of these other services we'll talk about today, if you're just starting out, some clients aren't going to want to hand over cash immediately. They need to trust you. They need to see consistent and quality posts, and they need to see some social proof that you've done it for others. So expect some bartering at first, and that's normal. As an example, I've seen agencies offer restaurants and salons one to two months of free posts in exchange for free food and haircuts. That's something, but hey, it gives your agency a foundation and social proof to become more established. After the trial period, we usually see agencies transition to paid services. In my case, when I dabbled in this with a partner of mine, we charged about $200 to $300 per month for three posts per week. We had about 15 restaurants in six months. We were generating monthly revenue of nearly $4,000, and that was just a side gig, and only for that service. So it can be quite a lucrative opportunity. Now, if you're looking to get into social media management today, good timing, because with the emergence of new technologies, you can manage social media at scale for multiple clients, and content creation is far less of a headache because of our friend, AI. Here's a tool that I use. It can create AI-generated posts. It can house all my clients' credentials under one experience. It can schedule posts across multiple platforms, and it also does the reporting. That's just one idea. Um, so a tool like this can really shift an agency's focus towards quality control, and it can take away a lot of those mundane tasks that you don't want to be doing, like the reporting. But of course, you want to find a solution that works for your needs and budget. Okay, next up is content creation. And I put this after social media because I think for agency owners, content creation builds or synergizes really well with social media management. I like to think of it like this. Social media is an appetizer. If a local business's prospects love what they see on their social media, those prospects are inclined to do more research. And if they're interested, they naturally go to a local business's website and they want the mains. So they're looking at things like landing page copy, blogs, videos, graphic assets like a nice digital brochure, and perhaps they're even interested in joining that local business's email marketing list. All of that widens your revenue potential and becomes a very natural upsell especially onto social media. Now, how you pitch it really depends on the prospect and their view of content. And I like to group this into two personas. The first is your content skeptic. That's the persona who needs some education around the value of content. That's where you want to be building a talk track that covers things like how content boosts website traffic, improves SEO, and helps them stand out from their competitors. So try and explain things to prospects like, if a lead is looking for a fitness trainer, are they more likely to gravitate towards the trainer who's writing great content about health and exercise, or the one who's doing no content? The second persona is your content believer, and this one's much easier. They understand content, they love content, and they're happy to hear out your ideas. But for this persona, you want to be really prepared with your topics and suggestions. Now, content creation has a straightforward pricing model. There are three strategies. I use all of these or a mix of them. Number one, you can charge by the hour. So if you're a knowledgeable writer, make sure you do your research. My personal suggestion is that your freelance rate should be at least 2.5 to four times what you would earn if you were to be employed at the standard industry rate. Number two, you charge per project, and that depends on the complexity and the number of hours uh, that you're going to dedicate to that project. And number three is charging a monthly retainer where you charge a client a fixed rate or fixed billable hours per month in exchange for your time to write um, any number of blogs or content requests that they might have for you. Okay, number four is search engine optimization. 
I love this one because SEO is such a booming area. And often I hear other agency owners tell me that local businesses are proactively seeking this service. So it really fits nicely into that easy to sell theme. Now, it's fair to say that SEO in many regards is becoming a bit of an essential digital service because it's so hard for a local business to succeed in this space without the help of an agency. And that's a great opportunity for you to be their coach and help them understand and execute on SEO within their broader marketing plan. So I've interviewed many agency owners about the secret to selling SEO effectively, and this is the key. Avoid promising overnight results. Encourage your prospects and clients to view it as a gradual process, like applying cosmetic renovations to a house. It takes time for things to look pretty. In terms of pricing it, it really depends on if you're going narrow or broad with SEO. So often we see two variations. Agencies who are content oriented, they simply repackage their offers as SEO optimized content services. That's fine, they're sticking to their discipline. But we see agencies who offer a full suite of SEO services generate lots more revenue. And that's where you're dealing with things like optimizing a client's website, link building, the content itself as well, and technical services, and a lot more. Now, my recommendation is that, especially if you're going broad with SEO, try to establish a good partnership with an SEO vendor, where you manage the client while they handle the execution. So you'll want to work out their fee, add your margin, and to make this viable for you, you always want to be making at least a 40% profit margin. What the SEO provider can also hopefully do or support you with is performing audits of your prospects and give them uh, their results to you in a report. You take that report, white label it, and show the business that it's ranking poorly versus competitors, not showing up in search. So you really want to instill the fear of losing and really drill the value of SEO into your prospects. So reporting is going to be key in this. A quick tip. Leverage keyword research and AI to discover what prospects of local businesses are searching for online. Here's a real life example from working with a client in the pest control space. After some keyword research and finding something with good volume and low competition. One of their highest performing organic lead generators was a blog article ranking for the search query, scratching noises in the walls. Think about why. It's opportunistic, organic, cost-effective, bottom-of-the-funnel content ready to convert visitors with a problem that they need solved. Website traffic leads to this client's website has been steady for years. So content like this can be a major lead generator for local businesses, and you can do it too. And to make this easy for you, use AI. So here's a really quick example of a prompt that I put in ChatGPT. I'm trying to target Arborists, and I'm leveraging AI to explain hey, what type of services do Arborists offer and what are their clients looking for? How's that for making your search process more efficient? All right, we're almost through this list, but stick around because I'll then give you my thoughts on how to package up some of these services. So next on the list is website development and add-ons. Now let's cut to the chase with this one. You're already an agency owner or you're thinking about starting your own agency, so you clearly understand why websites are critical, especially for local businesses. Your prospects understand that too. And many local businesses, if they don't already have a website, I guarantee you they're being called 15 times a day from other agencies trying to sell them one. So how do you cut through the noise? It's all about your positioning. Okay, so here are a couple of ideas. You can position your service as something that would help a client achieve greater online visibility, rank higher on search, and certainly rank higher than competitors by optimizing their existing website for SEO or creating a new SEO optimized website. So that's one idea. Another idea could be helping them grow their online sales by adding e-commerce functionality. And number three could be helping your local business prospects become more productive, generate more leads by adding something like an AI chatbot to their website. An AI chatbot, of course, is going to sit there 24-7 and answer queries for those local businesses from their customers outside working hours. So those are just a couple of ideas you can approach prospects with, but just remember you want to be leading with value, not selling product for the sake of selling a product.
So when it comes to your pricing strategy for website services, it really depends on factors such as the complexity of work, whether you're getting freelancers involved in the process and the cost of integrations. So the great thing we see is that many agencies price each of these things out monthly. So selling websites and add-ons can be a real honeypot of monthly recurring revenue if you can get it right. You could charge, say, $1,000 for a three-page website and then $30 to $200 per month for each individual component, like hosting, chatbots, the e-commerce store, etc. All right, we have reached the end. Before we finish up, I want to talk about packaging. Now, your agency may already be selling at one of these services we talked about today, and that's fantastic. But to scale your cash flow, consider adding complementary services as you become more confident. So, for example, let's say you're a really skilled medical writer and you're already charging clients $1,000 per month for blogs and you deliver that to your marketing person or an editor at the company that's contracting you to do this. So consider bundling in additional services like SEO optimization and social media copywriting for say an extra $300. Your copywriting skills will naturally work for social media and for SEO, all you need to do is understand how to do a bit of keyword research and integrate into that existing blog copy you're writing for clients already. You take that to your client and say, Hey, want me to save you time from SEO research and writing social media copy for the blogs that I'm giving you anyway? They're probably going to say yes because it saves them time. By packaging your services like that, you're scaling your revenue without exponentially increasing your work because your friend AI is going to handle many of these incremental tasks. So when it comes to packaging, what we've found is that when agencies are offering services and solutions based on clients' needs, and those agencies are offering services relevant to local businesses' needs, their retention rate tends to dramatically increase. And the magic number we've found is that when you're selling a package of four valuable services to them, an agency's retention rate tends to go up to 80%. Now, what that means is every year, eight out of your 10 clients are going to keep you because they view you as a strategic marketing partner. And that is a phenomenal result in the agency world. But please remember, only offer more services once you're confident enough to do so. And make sure you only give them what they need. We want to avoid disappointing clients. And don't forget to get the tools that are necessary to deliver these services with ease and at scale. That's all from me today. To give you additional knowledge about how to sell these services, I've left some useful links in the description. So please feel free to take a gander at those. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or thoughts on future topics, please drop them in the chat and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button.